All right, guys, welcome back. We are going to do um, sort of like a review um, and go over something a little bit new. But uh, this will get you ready for the assessment on Friday. And if believe it or not, we will be completely done with prehistory and ready to move on to our first River Valley civilizations next week. So it's flying by and um, um, in a blink of an eye, we're going to be already on to our second full unit. So, as you can see here on the screen, let me make it larger for you. If it will load, all our I can statements are going to be the same ones we've been working on for this in um, the last week or so, um, describing how they used mediums of exchange, um, examining the technology specializations, and comparing um, human environmental characteristics and the uh, population changes in river valley civilizations, et cetera, and analyzing the cause and effects of river valley civilizations. So what we're going to do today, like I said, I went back and forth on how to do this assignment. Um, did I want to focus only on the cave art or me and Miss Atala, did we want to focus on um, on just the cave art, did we want to focus on all of the um, different aspects of what we've been going over? And I think that's going to be the most beneficial. So for the, your bell work, pause the video and think, what were the purposes of the different cave paintings? So in the, in the second part of our class discussion um, earlier this week, we talked, we touched upon the cave paintings, and we're going to come back to that at the um, towards the end of this lesson in particular. So pause the video, think to yourself, what were some of the purposes for why did they do the cave paintings? They had many different reasons why, but pause the video and come. we will come back to this. So think about why do you think they had cave paintings? You can even jot down some ideas. And then our exit slip, when we get done, you're going to do a Venn diagram, and I will go over that here in a bit. So the Stone Age, what we've been going over, let's go ahead and get started. So dinosaurs, again, do not get caught up on the amount of years, um, the amount of years that you believe the Earth, how the Earth is. Just think about in, in terms of dinosaurs died out many years ago. And the first ancestors appeared a lot more recently than the dinosaurs lived. And no matter what, no matter what you've seen in movies, humans and um, dinosaurs did not live at the same time period. Even no matter how much I love the Flintstones, that did not really happen. So prehistory, what we started out with, the study, uh, studying a prehistory was um, we have to rely on the work of archaeologists. And we, we talked about... Um, Two weeks ago, we talked about the important hominid finds by Mary and Louis, Le Louis uh, Leakey. They found the bones of important hominids, and uh, Lucy was the most important by um, Donald Johansson. And she lived more than three million years ago. We know she walked upright on two legs, and we know she was about four feet tall. And she was um, in her early um, early teens to twelve or to twelve or eleven years old. And then here are the bones they found. Again, they did not find her complete remains. They found most of her remains, enough for us to know of her story, basically. So some other um, species we talked about, some hominid species that overlapped. Um, we talked about Homo habilis, Homo erectus, um, Australopithecus, and we'll talk about more that, that more here on, in a slide coming up. But these key finds were found all throughout um, the eastern coast of Africa, you'll see here. And so here again is a key slide. The, the key group, the four key groups we talked about um, were Australopithecus, and that means um, southern ape, but it appeared um, about four to five million years ago. Uh, years ago, and they stood upright and walked on two legs, and the brain was very small. And you remember, we went through this um, slide. We as the as things progressed. We, um, we benefited from the progression of these, um, as, as we learn things, we benefit. And so we're, 
we're in the most modern times and we um, we've as everything we've learned, we've taken advantage of. So from Australopithecus, we went into Homo habilis and they were the handyman and they um, their brain started to develop and was um, half the size of modern human. And they had these early stone choppers, which was basically just like a big stone. Then you move into Homo erectus and um, they learned to control fire. They started to migrate, which we talked about in the last lesson. And then the Homo sapiens, which is what we're part of. Um, we uh, migrate all around the world, everywhere but um, Antarctica. We have these tools like a flint knife. And most importantly, we developed a language where we can communicate with one another. Um, so we go down. We are uh, the first humans and their ancestors lived during the Stone Age. And we've talked about the three periods of the Stone Age. We know that there is Paleolithic, Meso, meaning middle, Mesolithic, and Neo, meaning new. So that's how I remember. Meso means middle, Neo means new. That's how I put them in order. Paleo, Meso, and Neolithic stages. There were three periods in the Stone Age. Paleo means old. So we just said that. People. So what do we know about Paleolithic? They were hunter gatherers. We talked about that. They moved around a lot, used fire, language, religion, and invented stone tools. As you can see a picture there. Um, Mesolithic, it means the middle stone age. People were, they were again, hunter gatherers. They moved around a lot. They used dogs and goats and they invented pottery, the bow and arrow. And the lastly, Neolithic means new stone age. They began farming an agricultural society. They started to settle in villages because they domesticated animals and plants and they invented the wheel, the plow and the calendar. So what were some of these tools we talked about? Earliest tools found in East Africa about 2.6 million years ago. Each stone was hit with another to create the sharp edge. And scientists think these first tools were used mostly to cut and grind food. People learned how to attach wooden handles. So these handles, um, meant they no longer had to stand right next to the animals and people were able to kill these animals from farther away. And the most important thing, um, they were able to get food and the tools helped them. And so we're now we're going to talk about the cave painting. So think back to your bell ringer. What were the reasons behind or what were the different things they um, did cave paintings or why did they paint on the caves? Well, it helped them show important hunting, how important their hunting was. So it, it helped them um, express themselves. So some caves have found had hundreds of paintings. Colors used most often were brown, yellow, tan, dark, black, and red. And around 1940, some kids were playing in a field in Lescaux, France. They came across an entrance to a cave that had been covered with tree roots. The walls inside of that cave were covered with these paintings made by Stone Age people 15,000 years ago. So here's some examples. So you see here, they painted like an actual animal that was important to them. Again, more paintings of animals that were important to their, to their culture at the time. And again, another example. So what uh, a fourth example here and a fifth example. So one thing that one reason that they painted was to express themselves. One, another reason was to show uh, maybe how to hunt. So like how almost for learning um, experiences. So those are two way, reasons that they um, did K paintings. So here's a little cartoon. Great hunt. Let's go eat. Then it says, hang on. I got to post this on my wall. So a little cartoon there. All right. So review. What um, was the most important thing to Stone Age people? You can think about that and answer to yourself. What were their cave paintings all about? I gave you two important things there about what their cave paintings were all about. And compare and contrast. Now, this is what you're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do this. This is going to be sort of like your um, exit slip and sort of help you get thinking about the um, quiz for the assessment for the end of the week. And then we are going to review in our um, live meets uh, even more so. So. It says create a Venn diagram um, and think about life in the Stone Age compared to life. It says in 2013, but we're obviously going to compare it to now. So let's look here. You have all been given this document. 
in the assignments on Google Classroom. On the left-hand side, it says life in the Stone Age. And it says one, two, three, four. Now it, on the right-hand side, it says life in 2020. One, two, three, four. You're going to list four differences on each side. How is life different in the Stone Age compared to now? Well, I, I can think of a lot of differences. Well, obviously, one would be technology. Technology is a big difference between then and now. And then in the middle, you're going to type, what are th uh, some things that are the same? What are four ways that life is still not, I mean, obviously, it's not going to be exactly the same, but the, what are some similarities between um, life in the Stone Age and life in 2020. And you are going to turn this in. And again, um, we decided, we went back and forth. How, what is something we can do to um, review a little bit and get us ready for our assessment on Friday? Um, so I hope this helps, um, helps get you in the mind frame of thinking about both lessons from last week and this week. And if you have any questions, I want you to feel free to reach out and be ready to learn with us either through a GIM kit, Kahoot, or some other method in our live meets this week. So I will, we will both, me and Mr. Talo, both will be ready to talk to you later. Bye-bye.